Hello, everyone. Welcome to 10 Minutes Astrology Podcast, the most easy way to learn astrology. I'm Rob Chang. I am Alejo Lopez. Welcome, everyone. Hey, Alejo. So, so today, yeah. today we're going to be talking about the 10th house. Mm-hmm. That is very so, professional, just like bang, directly. <laughs> yeah, it was like today, no, no. <laughs> no monkey business. Let's go straight to the point. <laughs> so, uh, the tenth house. Basically, if it, there are many things to try to figure out what the houses mean. If you think mm-hmm. the idea that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, mm-hmm. the tenth house is kind of middle way, right? Uh-huh. So, if you look at the sky, let's try to think that the highest part of the sky is the tenth mm-hmm. house. Yes, mm. it's not strictly like that, but it's kind of a metaphor we're using. Okay, astronomically yeah. speaking, it's a little bit different, but we're simplifying yep. it a bit, right? Mm-hmm. So, let's think that this this the, if you look at the chart and you see all of the houses above, the tenth house looks like it's like the higher part of the chart, right? Yeah. So this means that when a planet is there, is a is when it can be seen mostly. You know, when the sun is there, it's like high up in the sky, mm-hmm. right? So. A planet in the tenth house is a planet that wants to be seen. It's a planet that is probably seen, that is showing itself enormously. And that's why from the tenth house we get the idea of social status, right? The reputation, mm-hmm. your social reputation. So mm-hmm. the tenth house usually related to this idea of how you want society to see you. What do you want to do for society? And mm-hmm. perhaps how do you want to be admired for society? How what things are you want do you want to achieve and you want society to kind of congratulate you for that how you're going to achieve those things yes how you're going to achieve those things those things and um usually in in the western world i mean yeah we relate it to our profession right so basically mm-hmm. we usually end up translating the 10th house is your profession what you want to do mm-hmm. how you achieve success in the world because it's so high up and this this idea of society and success, we usually also relate it with the idea of authority. It's a mm. kind of, how do you relate to becoming an authority? How do you relate to other people's authority, to when other mm. people's are? There's this sense of a regulating principle ah. in the tenth house. Yes. Yeah. You, you just remind me something. When we talk about the authority, because it is very interesting when we were kids, our authority is apparent. Is our parents, our father, the mother. And this comes to a very interesting question for most beginner will ask about the if you if they read from the book or something, sometimes they will get very confused because which house represent father and which house represent mother? Because um, in the traditional astrology, in the traditional view, most traditional traditional view, well, thinking about the uh tenth house represent the mother figure and then the fourth house is a father and that is a very interesting view um, but i think what we learning in the modern astrology especially in the faculty we usually say it could be either i think maybe what do you yes. think so traditionally as you said yes the fourth house is the father because mm. it's the invisible uh, parent mm-hmm. right yeah only mothers know who their child is and only they know who the real father is right so yeah. the fourth house is the hidden parental figure and the tenth house is the one that we can all recognize because mm. it came out of this body right yeah uh but then you know then some people start saying like there is the function the like the psychological function of the mother and the mm. psychological function of the father and maybe traditionally speaking i'm really i'm really you know to be honest i have to say to be honest mm. i'm really against this idea of so much emphasizing gender roles in parental Ah. roles but so traditionally supposedly the mother is the nurturing one and the father is the one who goes out to work Mm -hmm. and comes back so again there was this idea that the father is not so present and the mother is the one who's more present and the mother is the one who's taking the kid everywhere so he's pushing him into society but then some people said okay this is actually different it's that usually it's the if we relate the tenth house with authority, usually the father is the figure is the authority figure, and the mother is the nurturing kind soft figure. Reality mm-hmm. shows us that this is not the case for everyone. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, even more, we have a children raised by two mothers or two dads, or one mother, one dad. So 
the whole thing about assigning one role to one house, I think, kind of collapses in modern times. Uh, so we come up with this idea of the parental axis. Mm -hmm. So the fourth house has to do with childhood and what made you feel safe. And mm -hmm. the tenth house had to do with a sense of authority that you gained mm -hmm. in childhood. And then it's projected onto the police officer, your boss, and mm -hmm. other authority figures in life, right? And it's not necessarily a person in your life that you can pinpoint. Yeah. It might be more like experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, I like this way to read the chat. Uh, let's go to the the most common things people talking about the 10th house. It's about the career, yeah. it's about the coding, it's about the, what they show this world, like you said, the social state. So today we're going to show some and someone who, when you see, when you hear his name, you know who he is, and then you will immediately say, oh, that, look at that tent house. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we are today. This is our case example. Salvador mm. Dali. Okay. You, 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 you know what? He's a very interesting figure because when you, when you, even you, you don't know him, but, uh, you will see his image in the public is like a, a gentleman and they have a very interesting mustache, right? Is that that the thing you like? <laughs> yes. Here we have him, Salvador Dali. So in his tent house, we see Venus in Taurus and the sun in Taurus. And what job he do? He, do, he, he did. You can choose. You can choose, okay. Uh, artist. But we did the sun the other day. Let's do Venus. Oh, okay, let's do Venus. Yes, let's do Venus. So Venus. I said you can choose, but I ended up choosing, of course. Yeah, Venus, you are so bossy. What is your ten house? <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so that is very interesting because he has Venus in ten house, and we know he is a very, very famous artist. And exactly. when we talk about no. Dali, when we talk about Dali, he is uh, you will immediately thinking about his picture and uh, tell us a little, little bit about Dali, Alejo. Well, if you think about Dali, you think about his desire to create some kind of artistic creation that would be long lasting and valued, right? Uh -huh. was, yep. You know, like, like the pieces, like his, his art was very expensive. <laughs> It's very expensive, right? So there's what? a sense of you value mentioned? to beauty. Sorry? Ah, value to beauty. I said, why Why you have to mention about expensive? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he has, he doesn't only, only have Venus in Taurus, he has the yeah. Sun in Taurus, Mercury in Taurus, yeah. Mars in Taurus. So the idea of something long lasting, something mm -hmm. glamorous, perhaps something pleasant is very important for him. Mm. And with Venus in Taurus, I would say that the way, you know, what he values is stability, is pleasure, again, beauty, and it has to be physical, it has to be real. And mm -hmm. with Venus in the 10th house, he may want to be he, his social role. So he, he wants society to see him as a creator, as something uh -huh. who creates beauty, and creates beauty that is worth it, and also that it's long lasting, that will prevail the course of time, you know, that will mm. be in, impactful that it's it cannot you know it's like a huge bull it cannot be ignored yeah exactly well i, I have to just uh, trace this tiny bit i know usually we try to not go to two at the events but i think most people will question what are we talking about dali because if you know dali's picture usually it's very interesting very funny and a little bit more distortion and the mm. people will ask say does that show in the chat i have simply tell you Yes, it showed in the chart by aspect. So, but we don't go there today. I just, I just stop here. But yes, it does. From the chart, we can see the Venus aspect can tell us those image about distortion, those interesting, uh, mysterious image in this chart by Venus aspect. So I just stop here. But so we know that is ten house. Should we do a little exercise? Yes, I would say as the sun is there. Let's mm -hmm. do the sun in the 10th house as homework. But then let's go for another planet. You know, Venus, yeah. the sun, they're nice things. Let's do for a difficult one. So yep. if you want to go like a higher level of exercise, let's do uh, Saturn in the 10th house. Yep, okay, Saturn in 10th house. So this is a how he show other people his public image. And this yes. could be 
a person who who describe his we describe his social status in the uh penthouse and also maybe his relationship with authority ah yes has a certain flavor right yes yes and remember with saturn always don't stay on the gloomy there's, there's mm, yeah. a lot of hardship with saturn but if you do the work it promises results so what is saturn promising in the 10th house okay yeah, I, I agree one thing, because uh, if we just beginning to learn astrology, we usually see it very easily, like uh, what is good, what is bad. But to be honest, when you know a little more astrology, remember, everything could be good and everything could be bad. But what our view of astrology is uh, bring out of chart, bring the most, you know, bring out of the most. So you leave your chart. You, you, you bring it out into your life and you will find amazing. You'll find it is very interesting when you, when, you, when you show other people that planet in, in the house, in the sky, and uh, you will feel so great. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for listening and watch 10 Minutes Astrology. And uh, this week we talk about 10 house. And I really hope you like this episode. Please share and subscribe. If you have any, any question, please send us email to aoa.inquiry at gmail.com and or join our join us to the on the Facebook group at 10 Minutes Astrology. And also, well, if you find want to find Alejo for consulting, you can find Alejo to his website and Instagram at uh, Liminal Cosmos. Liminal Cosmos, you can see from the video here, okay? Liminal Cosmos, and I will also put a link. So, well, and then next week, what are we going to talk about? Next week, we talk about the next house, of course, the 11th. No, we can come easily, 11th house, yes. Sorry, sorry, just play it up. Okay, well, but uh, so next, next week, we can talk about 11th house, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.